hello. Uh, today I have, um, this just came in the mail, it's a Lilygo T Pico C3. And one thing that interested me was the price and the uh, function. So it's got a Raspberry Pi RP2040 chip in it and an ESP32 C3 chip in it. Plus it's got a little TFT LCD screen. I mean, it's a teensy screen, but I mean, this was 15 bucks, I kid you not, from um, Alibaba, I believe that's what it's called. AliExpress, Alibaba, AliExpress. Um, couple things I, off the bat, don't love is that it took longer than the two weeks to get here. Um, that's, okay, that's fine. Um, however, the site was a little misleading and I'll show you where it showed that it came with a case, but you have to do a little picking, you have to click something to get that case and it shows the case it's only $2 more, but now that I have this, I really wanted that little case. But let's pop it open and take a look. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to play with this thing. It's 15 bucks, you know? Okay, let's take a quick look. So, oh, well, initially one thing I, I don't know if you can tell, but this is not on, is that an angle? That can probably be adjusted because there's a pad. Oh, and it's lopsided a bit. That can probably be adjusted by, oh yeah. So I, I guess we can just move that into position. I won't ding them for that. A little bit of pushy, squeezy, whatever. Um, oh, there's a little antenna. There's a oh, there's a room for an additional antenna on here, huh? It's got um, I it was that USB C, which is great. Uh, it's got a little button one, button two, and a um, what's that? This looks like a reset. It's called um, R U run button. Okay, that's probably just the reset. Maybe a, a sequence of these will power cycle it or whatever. On the back, there's another little two-pin connector. Oh, here's the boot button on the back. Cool. One other thing underneath, whoop. <laughs> I just flung all the little pin connectors you can solder in. It comes with connectors, little wire, and a little two-pin connector there. Um, I think let's, uh, let's plug this in and just see what it does. I imagine there'll be a little splash screen of some sort. I have no idea. Let's... Let's check it out. Here we go. First boot. Woo! Oh, upside down. Raspberry Pi. All right. What's that say? Hello, Pico and ESP32C. Scanning available networks. Ooh, they found my home network. Attempting to connect. Well, that's not going to work because, uh, oh, it's trying to connect to their, you yeah, know, must be set to their Wi Fi, that XI. Whatever it spells, I can't see it's so small. Here, I'll bring it up nice and close so you can see if you're interested. Oh, okay, the run button seems to reboot it. And if I push this boot button on the back, right down here, what happens? Boop. Nothing, okay, that doesn't do anything. What if I push them both at the same time? Does it put it into a serial mode, maybe? Oh, I think it does. That way you can connect to it on a serial port. And if I hit run, okay, it boots it again. Okay, cool, cool. I loaded Thony, T-H-O-N-N-Y. And um, so I, I see output in the serial for the ESP. Uh, and you can see it's connecting and basically spitting out what it did on the screen. It turns out that, um, I could probably connect here as well. Let's, let's, uh, Let's do that. That might be fun. Um, the issue is apparently the USB-C cord, you have to change the polarity in order to connect to uh, the other one. So I'm kind of surprised, but I downloaded the, um, oh, I'm, I've got the wrong board selected. Uh, I downloaded the, what is it, a Pico, Sandra Pico. I downloaded the proper, yeah, proper board. Uh, let's just select it. I didn't select it in the right spot. So you have to go into um, board, and right now I have ESP, so what I did is I grabbed the, where is it, oh, TTGO, there it is, that must be it. And now if we watch serial, I don't know if we have two serials going at the same time if it'll crash it, but let's reboot it. I just hit the power on it, let's see if it spits out, oh, there we go. So it spits out all the information right there, same thing. Um, woo, look at it go, woo, that's disco-y. Okay, so time to figure out how to connect to it uh, as it is the um, Raspberry Pi 2040.
Here I am with the Sheen One uh, Liligo T-Pico C3, which is what this is called. And uh, here's kind of a, you know, a little picture we just saw, but basically it shows the screen size and what adapters you need. But here's where it gets really interesting. There's little lights for different connections. So I had green for the ESP32. If it's blue, <laughs> the, the polarity is different and you get the Raspberry Pi 2040, which is just wild to me. And um, here it sort of shows you the polarity. I do not know how to uh, do this. I have a USB-C to um, USB cable, so I'm going to have to come up with some clever adapters and figure this out. So <laughs> I guess that'll be a little project, but I'm excited to keep on rolling. So yeah, I followed this information and to use MicroPython, that's why I had that Thony, uh Python IDE and then the Arduinos for the SP32. Pretty slick. Okay, I just wanted to show you real quick what I meant before about when it lights up different colors. So I'm not sure if you can see too well here. I'll try to zoom in. Can you see where it says RP240? Right here, that's the Raspberry Pi 2040. And then down below it says 32-C3. So when I plug the cable in one direction, it's the RP240. Now watch this, I'm gonna pull this out I just wanted to show you what I meant here. Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, so if I pull this out, the cable, whoops, and I just flip the cable over, it changes the polarity, and now check it out. Now it's lighting up green, and it's gonna boot off the ESP32C3. That's pretty wild. I like it. Okay, so some promising news, progress. I'm sitting there scratching my head and I tried you know, flipping the cable around, uh, meaning plugging the opposite end with an adapter. And long story short, all I did was pull the USB-C cable out, turn it over 180 degrees and plug it right back in. And now when I go to tools and manage, well, wrong thing. <laughs> when I go to, uh, let's see, configure interpreter, Look at, the, um, look at the port. Now it's a USB JTAG serial debug unit on USB modem 14401. That is different than what we saw before. So, okay, this is good. Um, however, I'm getting this device is busy, but let me stop what I'm running up here, even though this probably won't work. Uh, okay, device busy, let's try playing it again. No, okay, but mini progress, mini, mini. Okay, so. Got it. Now, this is a little crazy. So right now, <clears throat> I have it uh, set up. Here, I'll plug it in just to show that it is on the RP. See the blue light? So it's on the RP2040. And I could not get it to boot into mode. You'll notice I'm holding a loop of wire. Well, in order to drop it into the uh, mode that I could actually get access to it, I had to put... Oh, let me hold the orientation correctly. So it's... GPIO A09, which is at the top left, and a ground. So you cross those, unplug it, plug it back in, and boom, Sony was able to see it, and I was actually able to load code and execute it. It took a bit more massaging to get that to work, and I will show you a little bit more about that. But, yeah, why don't I show you that first, then I'll show you actually the code that I got running. Right now it's plugged in and I'll hit stop. Okay, and now I've got it down to the command prompt. Like I said, I had to do that full reset. I also had to load, I really had to wipe the thing clean. I had to do a lot, I'll, I'll put a link, but basically I had to wipe out the, um, the UF2 file, or reload the UF2 file, and I had to do some other interesting things. Um, uh, let me let me jump into what I'm actually doing here. So here's the TFT uh, underscore config.py. There's a kind of an error in the original one. So I grabbed this one and I also changed the phase to one. Uh, you'll need to do that. And I've loaded this to the Raspberry Pi portion. <laughs> and then I also loaded, um, uh, well, here's the script, the hello py. It's in uh, Python. And you'll notice it's calling the TFT config, which is this. And it's also calling this um, font. So I uh, grabbed the font, made that into a PY file, and I've uploaded them all onto the Raspberry Pi. One thing that's really cool is you can run this code 
from the um, you know from here and you don't have to compile it or and you know I loaded them up onto the processor but that's kind of a neat thing that you can kind of run it on the fly much like you would with um, uh, you know anything that runs MicroPython or some of the controllers that run MicroPython I should say but let me show you what this looks like uh, when we run the hello code okay let's hit play on the uh, on the Thony script and there it says hello and then the code says to generate random hellos all over the place look at that Woo okay I'm just gonna hit stop on the Thony input uh, interface here and boom it stops the code from running reset it'll just go black you have to run it um, every time you know I, one thing I don't know is let's see if uh, I don't think there's any Thing in place for these buttons to do anything but let's just see you never know sometimes these yeah there's no code to do that okay yeah but um that's a first kind of first pass at it um i did lock it up several times trying to get this to work and spent most of my time trying to figure out how to rebuild it so i wrote some kind of notes on that and i'll share those as to uh how to recover it um i got it in some strange loop cycle and it just took me a while to figure out how to you know, the right sequence of holding down your know, boot for this and the cord and all that. So I will share that. But uh, so far, I like this board. Oh, and I also, I ordered the case. I bit the bullet. It costs five bucks. If you order it, the board, the case with this, it's like a two extra dollars. Just be careful you pick the right one, unlike me. Um, <laughs> okay, thanks for watching.